What is up everybody? Logan here again with another video. Uh, this is my cool little Zoom background. I'm not actually at the beach. I'm joined with Vance today again. You guys have loved the last video that we did together where we were talking about the iron flies and also the broken wing butterflies and going in depth on them. So Vance has been running a strategy in the Discord. It's a 21 days to expiration strategy where he hit a new 21 day expiration cycle. Vance takes a new position and it's kind of just like rinsing and repeating is how my brain sees it right like once we hit our profit goal we hop out and then we just rotate that money and keep rotating it so i really appreciate you coming on for another one man and uh i'm i'm excited to see what we get into on this one hey i'm glad to be back logan so basically the 21 data expiration trade is kind of a derivative of a uh, of a typical long-term trade a lot of times You'll hear uh, some of the big talking heads uh, who do videos through like uh, TD Ameritrade or Tastyworks. They'll talk about doing uh, 30 or 42 day expiration cycles. Mm -hmm. And essentially the 21 day uh, is similar to it. It's just, it's a little bit shorter, but the basic premise behind it is the same, which is basically every time we hit an, an expiration cycle at the 21 day mark, mm -hmm. we take a position, um, Generally, we're going to do this in, in the SPY or, or SPX, but basically we take a position based on the deltas of that day and we take a small position and our plan is to exercise that when we hit a specific profit mark. Mm -hmm. And there's two ways you can do it. Uh, you can do it by a straight percentage point or you can take it at a specific value uh, depending upon how you want to run it. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to, you know, for example, the play we did today, uh, we jumped in here and we took a 15 delta play. So what basically you're going to do is you're going to come into SPY and you're just going to find uh, somewhere between the 10 to 16 delta. And we go up here to like the 400 strike. We're going to sell that and we're going to buy the one right behind it. And that's going to give us a $9 credit. And we would basically just take that play. We have a 15 delta here. Uh, so our risk is about 15% that it's going to expire outside of the money. Mm -hmm. But realistically, what's going to happen is, is once we have any day where the stock moves positive against us, you're going to see some theta decay. You're going to see some, some price movement decay. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, as time goes on, you're going to see that type of decay. So realistically, what we're hoping for is that, is that SPY will not move down or it'll stay where it's at. And usually within 10 days, about halfway through, we're gonna be able to close this play for profit at 50% right. or better. Um, if you wanna do it as a target mark, what you could say is, okay, it, it, you know, there's a $9 credit. Let's say we wanna make a 5% return on each, each play we do, mm -hmm. which, is a, which is a pretty good goal. Um, you could say, okay, as soon as uh, I can return it to a credit, I can buy it back for $4. Uh, that would net me a $5 credit. Mm -hmm. You can do that as well. And basically the idea is, is that if you have $900, you know, you can do this with a, with a very small account, which is why it's a really great way to build an account and get you some experience. It says with only $900 if you had, you could literally run one $100 play over the course of this 21 day cycle, because you're going to have three over the course of 21 days, it's three weeks and there's going to be three 21 day expirations mm -hmm. per week. So over the course of three weeks, if you had $900, you could do one $100 play over that time frame. And if you earn a 5% return on it by the end of the year, you know, you would double your money. Now I know that doesn't sound like a lot, you know, 900 eight hundred dollars. You could obviously do that much quicker in a lot of different other ways, but if you're somebody who's just getting into trading, um, or if you're somebody who really wants to learn how spreads work, and you want to take a very safe stand to make a relatively risk-free amount of you know money, this is a great play to do. And this is something I just kind of do in the background on my account. It's just a way of, you know, making an extra five, ten dollars a week uh, per play. Yep. And I don't really have to worry about it because time is on my side. 
even if we have a, you know, even let's say tomorrow spy were to, to go backwards on us and start running down, you know, odds are it's, it's not going to go to 400 in a day. That'd be a huge move. Right. Um, so even if it went down, we'd have to have several consecutive days of it running down up against that mark. And because of the general movement of just the market, it's going to most likely return and go back up inside of that 21 day period. Yep. So unless the strike actually gets breached, the odds of it actually even running against you at expiration are very low. Even though it is a 15% play, there would be a, a massive amount of negative movement for that to actually happen. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I like that idea too. And like like you said, I mean, even if SPY was to drop, right? Four, let's just round to 420 and it dropped all the way to 400, that would be a 5% downward move roughly which it's even super rare to see anything over a percent on an index no positive days in the interim oh yeah no positive days at all like we would really have to see some sort of correction um there'd have to be some big driving force behind it so yeah especially with how strong everything's looking right now i really do and i like this trade yep so one of the things you can also do, and I don't, I, I actually have a strategy guide in the Discord. So for anybody who's in the Discord, uh, there's a strategy guide you can download. Uh, I'm going to be updating it. Um, if you're not in the Discord already, that's a great reason to join. Um, one of the things I don't have it in in the guide right now, but I'm going to be putting it in, is when you do have those days where let's say SPY did move against us, mm -hmm. one of the things you can do is you can turn around and you can turn this into an iron condor you can add the call side against it. And there's a couple of reasons why we might, we might want to do this. The first reason is it lowers our overall risk because the extra credit we receive is going to go against the collateral we've already put down. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing about it is that if you're looking from a risk to reward standpoint, if you then put on the iron condor, let's say you end up create, you end up collecting an additional $5 credit from the, from the call side, mm -hmm. you actually can get a 10% return on your hundred dollars. And if you think about it like this, if you did nine plays where you collected 10% on a hundred dollars, right? You would actually get an extra hundred dollars at the end of the 10th play. Yeah. You could then double up on future plays and put $200 down on one of them and compound the amount of money that you're making. Um, what I would recommend Call size, we want to be a little bit safer with because of that general upward trend. So if you were going to put an iron condor on it, when the price were to go down, I would look closer to a 10 delta. Uh, you won't get as much credit out of it um, because there gen generally is more, more meat on the put side than the call side. Mm -hmm. But even if you can eke out another six, seven, eight dollars in credit, again, you know you're going to manage it early and you, you put it on and then immediately put in a close order to close out to collect, you know, like a net $5 credit or net 50% credit. Yep. And then you just basically keep an eye on it. And if, you know, usually within 10 to 14 days, as long as we don't have a, a massive event where it's moved heavily in one direction or the other, the decay on the position is just going to be so much that you're going to be able to pull it off and you're able to collect your money. Uh, one of the other things you can do, which is kind of nifty, um, is that if you do that and you have that iron condor and it's kind of bouncing back and forth, um, once you actually close out of a position, so let, let's say let's say we did this and let's just hypothetically say that SPY moved against us, it moved down to like the 409 range. So we threw a, we threw a call spread on it and it, this, you know, we, we put this on it and then this decayed enough that we could we took it off. And now SPY moves up a little bit. Um, we, you know, but we aren't necessarily at our profit point here because we can put another call on here if we wanted to, because we still have time in the play. We have we have a total of 21 days in this play. Mm -hmm. So you could re-up one or both sides and change the strikes and try to get more credit out of it to increase the overall profitability of the position. So that's one of the nice things about it is that as long as you're not necessarily doing a day trade you can kind of go in and out of the position if you've got that condor on multiple times to extract a few extra 
dollars in credit. They're just rotating your money in and out as the underlying goes up and down. Like, right, like it's almost impossible to time the perfect time to do it. But if you get a general feel for the market and any events that may be happening that week, a pretty solid timing. Like I've, I've done it before where I've sold a covered call and then the covered call hit 50% and I bought it back. And then two days later, I bought, I sold the same one for the same price. Thing with, with SPY and SPX being so close to its all time highs right now mm -hmm. is that you're going to get that rebound where there's approaches at all time high. It generally faces a lot of resistance. So you could sell that, you could sell that, that call credit spread. And then when it bumps off the resistance and goes back down, you can close out of it, collect, collect the money. And then as it starts to go back up again, you could, you could sell that credit spread again. And because your collateral is already on the table, you're not putting any extra collateral in. So you can, you, like you said, you can just kind of go in and out a, a few times, which is, which is a really sweet play. Relatively risk-free. Um, we don't, you know, you don't see a lot of, you know, a lot, you don't see a lot of run-ups, you know, because you'd have to have multiple consecutive days of it going up or down for it really to put pressure on the position, yep. you know, without any, without it going any other way. The one thing you run into with SPX, which is a little bit more difficult than with SPY, is once you start to get out past that, that 21 day mark, that 20 to 21 day mark, some of your strikes start to evaporate. So now they only become like there's $10 wides. Yeah instead of five wides. So sometimes you're kind of forced into a particular play. So like if you if you wanted to get into it here and you wanted to do a five wide, uh, you're, you're kind of stuck taking it in this range, the, the 40, 20 to 40, 30, you can either do the, the 25 and the 20 or the 30 and the 25, or you have to go farther in. Um, in this case, what I would do is I would do the 25, 20. Again, it's a 16 Delta. I'm gonna collect 40 credit on it. You know, and, and, and so with, with SPX, uh, because I, I, I really want to try to get 5% out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I'd want to manage it at, at I'd want to buy it back at a $10 credit. That way with, with commissions and fees, I'm still going to take home $25 in credit. Yep. And um, as soon as I had a chance to throw a condor on it, I would most likely do the same thing. I'd wait for, wait for it to go down a little bit, uh, which I knew was kind of the, it, it's weird because usually you want to sell them as it's going towards it so you can get the premium. But with the call side, I just, I, I'm always leery with the call side. Uh, I've had more condors broken on my call side than my, than my put sides over the years. So I'd rather it be going down and, and then, you know, selling into it. One of the big things with SPX is I, I like the tax benefits of it. Yep. It's a, it's a 1256. So uh, only 60, I'm sorry, only 40% of your gains are short-term uh, taxed. So 60% of it's considered to be long-term. So that's, that's really huge at the end of the year, especially if you're making a lot of money on the, you know, if, if, if you're investing bigly yeah. in these types of plays, you know, at the end of the year, that, that saves you a lot of money. Kind of popped up in the Discord occasionally. Uh, and I just kind of touch on his risk management. A lot of people are always asking about that. So <clears throat> generally speaking with, with risk management, with whether it be a, a butterfly or these types of plays, um, I find that most people like to do a, a, a three X loss. So, you know, if you're, if you're receiving an initial credit of $50, let's say, um, you would, you would want to buy back the contract at if it, it was going against you when it, when it hit, three times whatever your initial credit received would be. Yep. Um, generally speaking, I'm a bigger advocate of rolling. So uh, that way you're not, you're not actually locking in your loss because you're receiving a credit down the road. But that would go for these types of plays as well. If it's moving against you and, and your strikes are breached, you'd want to close this position. Um, and what I would just recommend is just roll it out 21 days just kind of, or, or, you know, if it's, if it's that oddball day, you know, the, the day 20 and just kind of go with that, that flavor and just have that be your next strike and just, you know, roll it for credit and just know that if you've rolled that one for the credit, you kind of want to make a mark of that one um, because then you're going to want to, 
probably hold that one as close to expiration as possible mm -hmm. because you did lock in a bit of a loss initially uh, when you did when you did the roll. So you want to make sure you're recovering as much of the credit as possible. Mm -hmm. But that would basically be it uh, if you want it out of the play. Otherwise, just buy it out of the 3x credit. Putting on any play, um, most of the brokers will have it. I know like Robinhood doesn't, but they'll have um, they'll have a stat here. It's called touch. I'm trying to find it. I'm looking right at it and I can't see it there. There's touch percentage. So generally speaking, your touch percentage is almost always going to be double your in the money percentage. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're putting out a play like this 21 day play, you know, it, it hopefully won't hit within a day or two of putting it on. Um, but even if it did, you know, my concern of that, you know, two days in isn't, nearly as great as if it were like two days before it was going to expire. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the general time remaining on the contract is, is a big proponent in the decision-making process for really any contract, you know, whether you, I, my belief is personally is that if you have more than two days on the contract, if it's touching your position, unless it's blowing clear through it, right. just relax and let the, let the odds play out, you know, the first defense mechanism, whenever you choose any play, should be that you're choosing a you're choosing a delta and an odds percentage that you're going to win. That's your first defense mechanism. You know, if if you're choosing a if you're choosing a, a, a 0.7 delta, you know, on a spread, there's a pretty good chance you're going to lose. You know, see so if you're taking a very low delta, you know, you're taking anything in the in the the sub 20 range. You know, that means that that odds are, you know. Uh, a 20 delta means that 20 times out of 100, you're you're going to expire out of the money. So I'm a big proponent of letting the odds play out to that extent. You know, if that 20 delta, you're going to have a touch of of probably close to 40 percent. So there's a there's a 40 percent chance that you know it's going to approach and possibly touch your strike. You know, but that doesn't mean you just drop the position because there's a you know again you you have a 20 percent chance of winning it. So the time frame of it is is just as important as the way it's moving. I appreciate you coming on to share your knowledge again, man. It was such a good trading day, I think, today. Really pumped to hop in on some of these, too. These, now that I have this understanding of them and your mindset. And I love how passive and hands-off they are to just use the extra money in your account that you have to just collect a little bit more money. Why not? You know, It's passive. It's backseat driving style, right, where... You know, your play is almost on autopilot and you might just have to get it back on track. So I love that. Like, I, I seriously love that style of trading so much because you get paid just to sit in the trade. But I appreciate you coming back on, man. And uh, that's going to be everything for us. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe on this video as it means a ton to me. Make sure you guys check the link in the description for the Discord if you want to join, follow our plays. Uh, we're doing a 3K to 10K challenge as well, and we had our first successful day with that today on the first day. So that's going to be everything for me in Vance, and we'll see you guys in the next one.